All right, doing an Emma part two. If you remember in part one, uh, and if you haven't watched part one, I suggest you go and watch it now. It will be up here somewhere as a link, uh, or it'll be in the description below. Um, I've got the chicken carcass and those veggies that it was cooked on top of um, in that container. I'm just putting that now into my crock pot. And I'm going to get some, top that up with hot water. All the flavouring you need is in there really. So you don't need stock cubes, you don't need anything like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just push that down. Into there, you still see there's plenty of good meat on there. So it's, you know, it's another meal really. Top that up. that's about right and what I'll do now is I'll get that onto the cooker and cook it right down uh, it's important to do that because the next stage involves just taking all that off the bone um, and getting rid of the bones and just adding it back to the soup along with some vegetables to cook it with so um, that's that's the end of, of this phase effectively of doing an emma uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention right there was the fact I like to put some garlic in it. Plenty of garlic. And there. So I just crack them and throw them in. That's four cloves for that pot. Uh, I like to take lots of garlic this time of year because it's really good to ward off those horrible viruses and stuff. Right, so I'm going to put that on my crock pot now and just get that cooking away. I'll just leave that on low for hours. So I've got some of these dried herbs and you may have seen as picking some of these on that video series so uh, if you've not seen that go 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 over that series um, and it'll be linked up here and uh, also in the description below the video uh, this is one of the herbs that we were picking it's it's sweet gale you've seen us harvest this on on the previous videos emma's been so good she's she's marked what I need to do with it on there just to remind me so soup stews curries meat chicken fish and stuffing I, I, I really like this herb and um, it was a full packet as was that uh, and it's gone down even though it's very very precious to me and I've got the sweet fern as well again soup stews chicken meat and stuffing that's a lovely one as well and then seeds the, the sweet fern, that's this one, sweet fern catkins and red alder catkins. These are all just sprinkle a bit into your food. It, each one has its own uh, nice nutty flavours and, and properties and aromatics. Lamb's quarter seeds, white pine needles. This one is goldenrod. Goldenrod was shown in in the video series for Nova Scotia we were harvesting it at one point baked goods meat and poultry okay yarrow it, yarrow grows wild in the UK as well and it's often overlooked before the East Indies were discovered it's probably what British people were, were using for their tea and it's got some rather nice properties. It's rather soothing. It's really, I, I, I like yarrow. I like it a lot. This one was, was grown in Nova Scotia, so it's going to have something special about it. I know it has, <laughs> because there's something great about that place. This is sorrel, sheep sorrel seeds. Use in everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is called Sweet Gale. It's the nutlets from the top of the sweet sweet gale plant that's this one and again this is mentioned in in the video series sweet gale nutlets lovely little name they're like little bunches of nuts i don't know if you can see that lovely little things but she says use sparingly in soup stews curries uh, and chicken so uh, i have used some of these already um but that's just giving you a, a look at all those wonderful herbs things that but for most parts apart from just yarrow and i don't even know it, that it's quite the same uh, in the uk uh, as seem a little smaller the, 
the North American ones in, in Nova Scotia seem really big compared to, to what we have over here. It's probably something to do with our climate, although it is ostensibly the same plant. Right, I'll get these cleared away and then I'll tidy up and we can get on and chop up some vegetables for this stew. All right, so I've had a look through my fridge and I'm taking this because I want to use it up. It's coming to the end of its freshness, so I really want to use that up. That's um, about a third of a rutabaga or a swede as we know it in the UK. It's a kind of turnip. And there's two carrots uh, which have peeled and I'm just going to top and tail like that. Now I like big peasanty chunks in my soups and stews. It's just the way I'm made. If you want it chopped up finely then do so. I've got a couple of leeks here which are excellent for flavour um, and I'm using those in place of onions. Now we've got plenty of garlic in there and with that leek and all that lovely taproot and the flavourings we're going to add to it, including some of Emma's wonderful herbs and about perhaps about half of that um, sweetheart cabbage. Right, uh, I'm just going to show you a little trick I, I do with these leeks and that is um, this is the dirty bit, but there's an awful lot of good flavour in, in those green tops there. And you don't want to throw that away, because that's another thing about doing an emmet, is you don't waste stuff. It's too valuable and too good to waste. So I'll put a knife through it. What I do is I go along the... If you look at it as an eye, you go from corner to corner. And then just cut down. Not all the way about there because you want to be able to quickly clean these and the way to do that is to just clean wash this under running water but you wash both sides and all the way down when you get down to the tight parts at the bottom it's it's clean you know you don't really have to worry about it but you do make sure you get all the grit and dirt off these rinse them wash them well and rub them with your fingers as well uh, as you're washing them. It doesn't take long. I'll do that now and I'll get back to you. Um, I like to fairly uh, coarsely chop my leeks uh, because they, they do give an, a, an extra texture to the sauce. If you want to finely chop them that's entirely up to you but I'm just going to go through them like that taking care not to slice into my own fingers. So I get them chopped up And like I said, I like the carrots fairly chunky, so I'm going to cut them on a slight bias. It's only because I'm lazy and I don't want to chase them around because they roll around more if you don't. And chop them up nice and chunky. Like I said, I like them fairly chunky in there. And it's never been easy to uh, to peel one of these. So the way I do it is I just kind of go down like that. You see that? You getting that? Right there. <laughs> like that. And then just curve the knife round as I can. Use a, if you use a broad blade knife like this, it's a lot easier. I got used to using one of these when I lived in Hong Kong because everyone in Hong Kong uses these massive broad cleavers or knives like this. Um, to do their prep and it's amazing how deft they can be you know w w with such a big blade you see, I, it, I used to stand in awe of some of the uh, fruit and veg men as they were doing what they were doing with them awesome stuff and um, in the markets and prepping the fish and all that it was amazing now for my rutabaga. Right, an easy way to do this. I just want chunks, don't I? Let's cut that that way, flip that over as it is, that way, and then get some nice thick peasanty chunks off it. See that? Gorgeous. You'll know you're eating something when you're eating that. You don't need to 
eat baby food all the time. You get your teeth into something. Right. There we go. Cut that bit of peel off then. Down there. Down there. And chunk it up. That'll be gorgeous. Uh, looking at that and looking at my crock pot, I think we might have a problem. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I don't know if we'll be able to fit the cabbage in. Maybe let these cook down a little bit and then cram some cabbage on top of it. But I'm going to get as much into that crock pot as I possibly physically can. So what you see here is the chicken and it's just starting to peel away from the bone. And at that point, most of the goodness has come out of the bones and now is in suspension in that wonderful stock. Also, you see in there are some of these black fungus. It's um, a woodier fungus. They grow in this country. You can find them on Old Elder. Um, and these are just cut up into shreds. So um, it's a woodier fungus. And it's cut into shreds. I've just put some in. They're really, they're really good in uh, in stocks. A nice flavouring, and they've got a kind of nice nutty sort of texture to them. Really nice. I, I really don't do like to use them, and um, I'm, I'm sure if Emma had them, she would use them as well. Okay, what I'm going to do now is fish out all the bones and separate them, put the meat back into the stock, and then we can add in the vegetables. Okay, that's um, all the bones and bits of meat removed. I'm just letting that cool off and then I'll just pick the bones out of it and uh, discard anything I don't want there. And the rest will go back into the pot because it's all good eating. In the meantime, uh, what I'll do, basically pimp up the stock. I want it to taste excellent. Let me have a spoon and have a taste. It's important to taste as you go. Yummy. Uh, it's salty enough so I don't need any salt. But I didn't have any celery in the things I was chopping up, you notice earlier. And in the absence of celery, I'll use about a half teaspoon of celery salt. This is actually uh, celery salt I made myself, and there's a video for that, uh, which I just basically put back into the old celery salt container. Um, I want some thyme in there because thyme, it just rocks with chicken. You know, it just rocks. So that's a good teaspoon of thyme. That's dried thyme. Or you want about a sprig of fresh thyme. Same, same thing, fresh thyme if you can get it. Um, I've got some red chilli flakes. Generous pinch because I'm a chilli addict. And again, um, Anchoan seeds with its wonderful carroty, beautiful fragrance, it's wonderful thing. This is Anchoan seeds or Carom seeds you may know it as. And uh, I'm just about half a pinch of those because they go well with all the tap roots we're putting in. Um, and pepper, 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 pepper. I want a good bit of pepper in there. I love pepper of all kinds. So I might add more just before serving as well. Right, now down to, to the uh, herbs that um, from Emma's homestead. Because this is called doing an Emma after all, you know. We've got, we've got to do an Emma, haven't we? Right, so I don't know how many of these to use, but I reckon I can spare a pinchette of those. Because that's got to last me. That has got to last. It says use this one sparingly. That one was called Sweet Fern Catkins. I chose the ones that look seem to be good with chicken. And this one, use sparingly, soup, stew, curries and chicken. So I reckon one of them heads, maybe just pinched up and then sprinkled in there. This is that little tiny like seed head and you can, you can crunch it between your fingers into just one of them. I, I imagine is enough to do all that because it says use sparingly. 
and Emma does know because in case it escapes your notice boys and girls she's a very good cook there we go and a little pinchette of those as well that's the lamb's quarter seeds now I'm going to be a little bit more generous with the sweet fern and the sweet gale so again a, a, a generous pinch of those two and I just like to rub them in break them up a bit and the sweet gale that's the sweet fern the sweet gale and I'm going to just pull some off there and break it up. So it's again, you know, a good pinch. And oh, they all smell so good, those things. They all smell so good. Okay. So that's everything in it that I want in it for now, apart from the vegetables. So we'll get them tipped into it. And these are the vegetables you saw me prepare. And they, they're all going into here, all of them. It's, I brought this over here because it's easier to demonstrate over here than it is in that corner where my crock pot is. So they go in and really what I'm gonna do now is put that back on, back on its element and run it on low for, again, for hours and then near the end of the cooking and just to warm it up I'll put the chicken back in because that's thoroughly cooked anyway so I just need to cook the veggies till they're, they're a really nice texture and I reckon about maybe three three hours um, on low something like that so there you are the chicken's been stripped off the bone and uh, it's all been put back in with the veggies uh, I've turned it up to high for a short while and then I'll turn it down to low for a couple of hours and then see how it turns out. We'll be back to show you. Okay, we're about an hour into it. I decided to cook it on on the high setting, um, which you might be able to see. And I'm giving it a stir. And let me just pick up a bit of the harder veg. Give it a squeeze. You see, it's not it's still a bit soapy, so it needs about another hour or so before that's going to be absolutely perfect but you can see already that it's quite a nice looking dish so we can get you in any closer there you go right that's another hour later let's just test the uh, doneness of those yeah there's still some still some bite left in them so that's absolutely perfect and what we do now is we put the lid back on and turn it off we just let that cool completely until the morning okay it's the next morning it's completely cooled off I'm going to turn it to high and we want to get it to a state where it's just bubbling on top so it's fully warm and then it'll be ready to eat and once it's reheated, I don't know what it does to the flavour, but it just improves it. I think most people understand that. Right. Okay, so we'll be back in a couple of hours. All right, that should be the end of the cooking process. I'll turn the uh, switch down to warm, just to keep warm. And there you are. That's just heated right up again. And it's ready to try. So there you are, one finished soup. Doing an Emma. Right, let's give this a taste for you. Well, they say the acid test for any dish is in the eating, so we'll give it a try, shall we? Let's have a taste. I just want to get a bit of that broth first. <laughs> that is heavenly. I, I did, I've tried a, a few times to do an Emma, and each time it seems to get better. And this one's no exception, it really is superb. Oh, those wonderful herbal flavours. The richness of the meat stock. I didn't use a stock cube, just salt and pepper and the herbs. It's wonderful. I like doing an Emma. Emma Baird, you're a good and gifted woman. Thanks for watching.
If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to receive notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.